Hello again. Today's lesson on Chapter 8, Section 3 of our Sociology text, we are looking at poverty in America. What defines poverty? Who has it? And what are the different uh, negative reactions and negative implications of being in that? So let's get started. First, we have to understand some terms relating to poverty. First is class consciousness. A sense or understanding a person has that, in, that identifies them with a particular class. In other words, a person who knows what class they're in, what social class or socioeconomic class that they're in. False consciousness, the adoption of the idea that the dominant class by the less powerful class. This is a, re, uh, a term we used from our last lesson dealing with the idea of people believing they're in the social class they're supposed to be in. There's a reason they have classes and they're in the correct class that they should be in, even though that a better class or a more higher class might be manipulating them to keep them in a lower class. Our next term is the working poor. People who have the lowest skilled jobs who receive the lowest pay. And finally, our last term, the underclass. People who typically are unemployed, who also have a family history of unemployment for generations. These are the basic terms, but as we go through this lesson, we're also going to be looking at some other key phrases that you're going to need to make sure that you are familiar with. And I'll try and point those out as we go through the lesson today. So we are going to look primarily at the statistics, the, the facts of what poverty looks like by the numbers. All right, so the main numbers we're going to use come from 2014, the census data that we have um, from the Census Bureau, which, is, which are approximate numbers, but uh, fairly close. Some of these numbers also come from the Division of uh, or the Bureau of Labor, which also is another uh, source that I've found for some of this information. So as we can see here in 2014, 14.8% or about 47 million people lived in poverty in the United States. African Americans and Latinos make up half of the poor, which is only about a quarter of the total population. And half of the poor households are headed by females. So we'll talk a little bit more about this in, in a minute here as far as what defines a person in poverty. But just these initial facts, if you read through them again, are kind of stunning. Okay, Again, particularly the second one and the last one. African Americans and Latinos make up half of the poor. So of everybody that's considered in poverty, half of them are African Americans and Latinos. And again, of those poor households, half of them are a female head of house, where there's only a female in the house or where she is the primary breadwinner or income person for that house. As we mentioned again, class consciousness is the identification with the goals and interests of a social class. So people know what social class they're in and what they need to do to get out of it. As we look to the next areas, we're going to look at what social classes exist in the United States. We'll start from the top down. The upper class consists of only 1% of the entire population of the United States. Now, there are two levels of this upper class. There is a group known as the aristocracy, which are people that have had a lot of money from a long time through generations and generations. People like Henry Ford, uh, DuPont, Rockefeller, Va Vanderbilt, these are families that have had money for a very long time. And they've got their money from their parents, their grandfathers, great-grandfathers, stuff like that. Membership into the aristocracy is based on blood. Okay, You were born into the family. The second form of upper class is known as the lower upper class. It's more often based on achievement and earned income. These people could actually have more money than the aristocracy, but they are not often accepted into these more exclusive social circles of this old money. Uh, the lower upper class are typically people that have earned the money themselves 
in a lot of cases, such as the Jeff Bezos or the uh, the Steve Jobs or the the uh, Bill Gates type people. They pretty much earned a lot of the money themselves and didn't rely upon grandpa or, or great grandpa to, to provide for them. So even though Bill Gates is considered one of the richest men in the world, he's probably not considered part of the aristocracy. Moving on down the list, we moved to kind of the middle ground of the socioeconomic social classes. And this is the middle class. And there are several levels to this middle class. About 40 to 50 percent of Americans are in this middle class. The upper middle class is about 14 percent of the population. And these people tend to earn enough money to live well. They're not rich but they're getting by and they're getting by comfortably okay they're bringing in money they can save their money they're not buying ferraris and, and having mansions for houses but they're earning enough money to get by and have money to save up typically these upper middle class people uh, have attended college and are well educated the next level is the middle middle class which makes up about 30 percent of the entire population people that are in this area, in 1999, made about $21,181 a year. Now, that was about 20 years ago. The current rate has obviously gone up, but you can kind of see where these levels are, at, at least at some point. The next level of the working class is the lower middle class, which makes up about 33% of the population, or about a third of the population. These people have below, in, uh, below average income and unstable employment, meaning that they have jobs, but not jobs that they would call careers, moving from one job to the next. Generally, they lack hospital insurance and retirement benefits, which kind of makes things a little bit more shaky for them. They have work, they're making eh, okay money, could be a little better money, um, but they're lacking in some of the benefits that a better job would offer. We also have, down the line, the working poor. Now we're getting into the lower classes. 13% of the population are considered part of this working poor. These people typically have lower skilled jobs with the lowest pay. They don't earn enough money to get above that poverty line and tend not to participate in the political process. So these people that are getting lower and lower, they are having problems financially. They're working, but not enough to make ends meet. And unfortunately, um, statistics have showed that they don't tend to vote, or they're not interested or not able to participate in the election or uh, political processes. And near the bottom, we've got what's known as the underclass, which is about 12% of the population. These people tend to be unemployed, working part-time or on public assistance. Unfortunately, a lot of these people have got uh, a lot of issues going on. They cannot hold a stable job. These are the ones that are typically uh, working at the Walmart or the Targets um, and cannot get more than minimum wage. Uh, they're kind of stuck in this rut. Um, and if, a lot of times they're not even working at all for whatever reason. So not, not a good picture for these underclass uh, citizens. That about covers it for our quick notes dealing with section three, dealing with poverty in the United States. Please make sure that you do read the section in our textbook, which does go into more detail as far as the terms and explanations. You'll also find some useful charts and tables in the book as well that might help you visually understand the discrepancies and the inequity, inequality rather, of the different social groups in the United States. I hope you learned a few things out of this lesson. If you do have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments box or send me a message, and I'll be happy to get back to you. Otherwise, I'll see you next time, and have a great day.